and happy Friday, everyone. It is tax day. It is April the 15th, 2011. I surely hope that you have filed your taxes by now, or else somebody <laughs> might be knocking at your door or filed an extension. Uh, but tax day, TGIF, to you out there in the audience. We do want to mention our sponsors uh, this week. Brought to you by Peacock, or this day, Friday, brought to you by Peacock Water Conditioning. Their mission is simple. They want you to love their water. 1800 Marion Marysville Road, here in Marion, also located in Bucyrus. Call them 387-6312. Also brought to you today by Bubby Man's Games. Buy, sell, trade, new and vintage games. 131 West Center Street, right here in Marion. Call them 341-7009. Open Tuesday through Saturday, 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Closed Sunday and Monday. The Ohio Neck and Back Pain Relief Centers, Scott M. Gray, across from Marion Center between TSC and Kroger. Telephone number 386-6580. Scott's also written a great new book, Good Back, Bad Back, and you can get this at all buying bookstores and retailers. And also today brought to you by Night Owl Theater located on the net at www.fritzlives.com to receive email updates, contact Night Owl TV at yahoo.com and that's N-I-T-E-O-W-L TV at yahoo.com. Joined today by Charlie, Marianne, and Fritz as always, we're going to kick off the program as we do each and every day with this day in history with Charlie Evers. Okay, we'll go over to Ireland. Politicians in Northern Ireland reach an agreement aimed at ending a 30-year siege of violence which claimed over 3,400 lives. Under the agreement, Protestants and Catholics in Northern Ireland would govern together in a new 108-member Belfast Assembly thus ending years of direct rule from London. There you go. And now, if you don't know what to do tonight, it's Friday night. It's one of the all-time great movie nights. I have a gentleman here who can pick out something to you. It's called The Flick Pick with Fritz the Night Owl. Fritz? Uh, thank you, Scott. Uh, tonight, probably a movie that uh, is better known than the ones that, uh, better known today than the ones that I talked about earlier. It is a film noir mystery suspense classic called Double Indemnity. Goes back to 1944. It was a five star film then. It is a five star film now. Believe me, you won't fall asleep during this. It'll hold your interest all the way through on every level. Uh, Billy Wilder was the director. 1944 was the year it was made, regarded as one of. Uh, I think it's regarded as one of the 100 best films ever made. Stars Fred McMurray, uh, Barbara Stanwyck, Edward G. Robinson, based on a superb novel by mystery writer James M. Cain, who also wrote Mildred Pierce and The Postman Always Rings Twice. Also uh, great movies. It deals with uh, an insurance salesman, Fred McMurray, who is seduced by a blonde-wigged uh, Barbara Stanwyck uh, he sells her a po she buys a policy on her husband, and he tells her about the double indemnity, how she gets uh, twice the money if he accidentally uh, uh, meets his maker, and uh, Fred gets involved in doing the husband in, so that uh, uh, um, Barbara Stanton can, can can collect the double indemnity. Edward G. Robinson, usually the bad guy in most movies, is the good guy in this one. It's kind of interesting because McMurray. Uh, who most people remember as the uh, nice father of my three sons, had to be convinced to uh, play this role. He's one of the most popular leading men, usually in light comedies or a couple of action-adventure things with Errol Flynn and uh, did a couple of westerns and so forth. But generally, he was a good guy type, light-hearted, easy-going, and he didn't want to do it because he said, hey, I'm just a saxophone player who gets in these films with the Carol Lombard and so forth. This is so against type, but he did it, and he was superb as the villain. The dialogue is crisp and moving. The suspense is terrific. Uh, it is film noir at its very, very best. Very e easily available on DVD, VHS, Steam, whatever uh, playback system you have. Can't recommend this one highly enough. 
Double Indemnity, Fred McMurray, Barbara Stanwyck, Edward G. Robinson, 1944, great then, great now, see it tonight. Fred McMurray, wasn't he also the absent-minded professor? Yeah. Yes. Oh, and I'm also son of Flubber. Yes, I, Flubber. I loved the absent-minded professor movies. Oh, but he's also, as a villain, he was so terrific in this. And then you see him in the Kane Mutiny, mm, where he is also the good conniving movie. guy who kind of gets everything moving so that he cons Van Johnson into thinking that Humphrey Bogart is crazy. Hey, that's a movie for another night. <laughs> well, Van Johnson is one of those guys who pop, could pop up in any movie. Oh, yes. A lot of people didn't know his name, but he would pop up and you'd say, that's Van Johnson. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was the all-American boy. But he was a heartthrob, too. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Went on to do a lot of murder she wrote later on in his career. Oh, did he? I believe he did. Oh, okay. Yeah, and lived to a good old... So did Fred McMurray. Lived to happy old ages and... Good for them. We do have a current event uh, this Friday to cap us off this week. Very interesting, I thought. I was reading the paper the other day. More women are embracing their gray hair. Can you believe this? The tide is turning on gray. More than 40% of Americans have some gray hair by the time they turn 40. More women have embraced their silver, white, gray, and salt and pepper locks. Celebrities such as Helen Mirren, Judy Dench, and Jamie Lee Curtis. Food maven Paula Dean, author Toni Morrison, and singer Emmylou Harris have uh, different shades of gray and silver in their hair. Marianne, I, uh, obviously the Case only in point. well, the, the only female at the table here, <laughs> and and you have gone gray. Did you ever give any thought to it? Well, my mother had beautiful white hair, and. Um, I never, I, did, I really didn't want gray hair, you know, I really didn't. And I used to have it um, lightened. I, I was born with uh, brunette hair, and I used to have it lightened and blonde and so forth and so on. And I finally got to the point where I'm tired of putting this dye in my hair. And I asked my, the, the girl that does my hair, and I said, Connie, uh, you know, when do you think I'll be able to stop putting this dye in my hair? And she says, well, you're pretty close to it now. And I said, well, let's, let's don't put any more dye. And I'm very happy, very happy with my hair. In fact, I have been in places and people I don't even know, men that I don't even know, come up to me and say, oh, my, you have very nice hair, <laughs> which really surprises me. Is your husband with you when these men are coming up to you? <laughs> no, no. No. But he, he wouldn't said, oh, care. He, he wouldn't, wouldn't care. No. No. What age, if you don't mind, uh, did you actually go gray, but you were still using the uh, dyes and oh, so forth? Oh, probably when I was in my 50s, maybe. And when you decided to stop using the dyes? In my 60s. 60s. So not too long. See, I'm giving away my age, aren't I? Did you ever think about it when you were on television? Were you getting little locks of gray then? Oh, no, absolutely no, not. That was no, all I, natural. No, I was in TV in the eight, late 80s and early 90s, and no. It wasn't gray then. No. That was natural. It was blonde. It was blonde. Charlie, uh, a male, but uh, gray on top. Yeah, I'm just letting mine go as it, uh, you know, and it looks occurs nice. naturally. And it looks yeah. nice. Did you ever give thought to dyeing it? No. I, I used to have bushy hair. In fact, you, let me tell you something. Not many people know this. <laughs> I've cut my own hair for 37 years. Really? Yes. Why? And people say, how do you do that? How do you Well, there do was that? once a thing invented called a trim comb. And you see it advertised in Popper and Canning. So this little plastic thing, you put a double-edged razor blade in it, and you can flip it over and shave, or you can thin your hair, or, you know, whatever. And that's all I remember. The only time I had a professional person touch my hair was when I was in a nursing home in cardiac rehab. <laughs> And they had a policy where they gave away one free haircut. <laughs> <laughs> well, they gave you one for free. They gave me one they for free. Said... I didn't like it as well as mine, of course. <laughs> so you still have this, do they make these tools? Anymore? No, I've been looking for a trim comb for years to replace it. Because one part of it broke off, but I still got it. You still maintain? Oh, yes. What age well, did you go, Greg? If I didn't have my trim comb, I don't know what I'd do. I'd be run away from home. <laughs> what age did you go, Greg? <laughs> I don't know. It's been the last... 10, 12 years, 15. So how old am I, 76? <laughs> that was quite a long time ago. So it was a long time yes. ago, but no thought to dying it. 
No. You know, the interesting thing is my hair has not gone gray yet, but there's little bits and pieces you see gray hairs popping out. But when I was in um, college, it was a big thing. People were highlighting their hair. Even the guys were highlighting mm -hmm. their hair. The little bit of blonde. They called it frosting, frosting for guys. Right. Frosted your hair. So I did that then. And the one thing I learned was, and a reason I don't think I would ever dye my hair, is because it makes your hair very stiff. Yes. And very yes. prickly and just a mess. Mm -hmm. You know, one a pet peeve of mine are men who shave their heads. Do they think they look good? <laughs> Apparently they do. But... Uh, Speak well, to them right I, out there, Charlie. Well, Speak to the men who have no, all their I hair. I they do that, head. Charlie, yeah. because they're losing their hair. Well, that could be. And that's they just want the to get reason. It over with. I don't think that's all of them, Mary. Not all of them, but a, but a good many of them. Prior to the, uh, the, the Sweet 16 or whatever, that's those commentators oh. with their bald heads, they, I don't know. You don't Why like it. it. No. You don't like it. Fritz, what age did you go? Or did you ever give any thought to coloring it? Well, uh, I wear the hat because I'm bald on top, and quite frankly, my head gets very cold, which gives me a headache. So it's not an affectation or bad manners that I got the Count Basie hat on. It's literally, I wear a hat oh, probably most of it during the waking hours. And you want to know major league pain, be a bald guy or somebody who's thinning and get a sunburn on the top of it. Oh. <laughs> it happened once, and that was when I got the head. But in air conditioning, the head gets cold, and then I get a headache. So that I wear the head. Uh, I wish I had enough hair to uh, dye. So uh, it's never been an issue one way or the other. Would you dye it? If I had, if I had enough, I don't really know. It would. I. I. I have no big problem against dyeing it if. Uh, if it would did not 10 years off, uh, I'd go sure. I think it's interesting in the youth-oriented society that we all live in now, that silver hair is coming. That is. That's very interesting. That, I Isn't think, that bizarre? I think your complexion, though, has a lot to do I with think it, it too. too. If, 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 if you've got a pale complexion uh, and, and, you're, and you're gray, it's, now men don't wear makeup. So, I mean, it's a thing that gray hair could literally wash out the whole mm -hmm. face if you're pale. Uh, so, again, there are a lot of factors uh, involved in it. What does one think about? I kind of, I kind of, I kind of liked, I kind of liked the shaved head, because I was considering that, mm -hmm. but uh, the family just said. You have to oh, have a certain no. kind of a head, though. So yeah, some, it, it was great on Telly Savalas. Yeah. It oh, was. Yes. And yeah. first of all, if, if you have a nice shaped head, it's fine. Right. But if you have a funny shaped head, I it's think not if so I was, good. If I was, I think if I was a ball player. Uh, football uh -huh. or basketball, I think definitely I very seriously consider a shaped head. Or what like, a, or like a, a, a wrestler or somebody in, yeah. in a sport. I wouldn't want my hair. Or a swimmer. Yeah. 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 Well, what about toupees? What do you think about toupees? Would you wear one? <laughs> well, uh, Would you wear one? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, well, here's the thing. They're I called th rugs. I think it's your, it, what is it, your mother's father that the baldness no, gene comes it, from? No, it's supposed to come from the mother. Would I wear a toupee? Well, my hair's not thinning, thank no, goodness. No, it isn't. Uh -uh. Yeah, but, but you know, young. if you... Yeah, 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 but, yeah, but if you want to, well, I don't know, I think, well, Fritz, what age did you start having hair issues? Oh, probably uh, when I was in the Army, and, and I think part of it was wearing that uh, steel pot sure. on the head all of the time. But uh, my, uh, on, on my father's side, uh, and my two brothers both have great heads of hair. It's all of my Sicilian ancestors that uh, had the... I have Sicilian ancestors. Yeah, Sicilian yeah. That, that had the Henry Mancini hairline. That is the hair just around and bald on top. So, so 20s you were in? Uh, I'd say mid-20s. So I'm past that. So I... Mid-20s, it started, uh, you got the little quarter-sized thing on the back of the head, and it starts to recede uh, at, at the front, and it goes and it just keeps working both ways and all of the next thing you know you're Henry Mancini. <laughs> well, I tell you, I'm gonna... I'm, about the talent. I'm, I'm, gonna connect, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna connect the dots on this one because Mary Ann brought up the toupee here. Mm -hmm. If Fritz, you were having hair problems in your 20s, obviously Night Owl Theater was not in your 20s. No, no, no. So during that run... Oh, yeah. You must have worn a right, toupee. Hair piece, sure. Hair piece. Oh. Did you like it? Oh, yeah. 
But anyway, it was, again, it kept my head warm and kept it out of the sun. And uh, the kind I had was uh, done by a great barber. And the guy put in, he said, I'm going to put in about 20% gray in this. Oh. So that you're not going to, there's not going to be any line on the side where the thing, and uh, I got the first one and I picked up my wife at work and we were in the car maybe 15 minutes and she looked at me and she said, did you get a haircut today? <laughs> and I said, no, I got the hairpiece. And it was that, the guy had done such a nice job. Oh, that's on wonderful. It. And it was literally, you, you put a little bit of adhesive on the inside liner and you put it on like a hat and that was it for the day. Well, do you believe these ads that say that they'll grow hair, you know, that they'll... Oh, that can't be I think, no, I don't that see how you could grow hair that, after your certain age. That's got to be some of those other ads, the yeah, pills I that will change things that yeah. are just ain't going to happen. I can't believe it. Yeah, but but who, who, believed in, who believed in heart transplants 20 years well, ago? Maybe. Why not? Did you wear the toupee for television? Did, was it ever there? No, I only, I only wore it for television or personal sure. appearances. It was when like, did you drop it? Uh, after, after I uh, left Channel 10. I like it better this way, to be yeah. honest with, with you. Hat is, this is a great look. With the, with the well, glasses, it's, it's worked. Yeah, you know, whatever works. Yeah. Um, but no, it, 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 was, it was grand. Uh, it was grand for television. Again, it really helped uh, shape the face better. And um, as I say, it just worked. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and it wasn't, it wasn't, a, it wasn't, a, it wasn't difficult. As I say, it was get up in the morning, after you shower, you just put a little of this adhesive on, you put it on, comb it in, and out you go. Recently, you returned to doing movies uh, at the Grandview Theater in right. Columbus. First time you've been on TV doing that in quite a while. Right. Did you ever give thought to putting the toupee back on? Uh, no, I stayed with the hat because, again, I knew a lot of people that were in TV that uh, were bald on the top and they had to put makeup on there to keep the light from shining on yes, it. And yes. It's, like I say, uh, to, to get makeup, to get TV makeup off is, is a drag. I never had to wear it on my face, but on a bald head it does shine. And... Uh, it's something to, 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 to consider. Mm -hmm. So the hat worked out good. The only problem with the hat is it, 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 I can't find a store that sells them locally. It's, as I said, it's my Count Basie hat. When I saw the Count wearing this, and, when I was, and he always wore it on his album covers, and man, I gotta get uh -huh. a hat like that. I'll tell you the unique thing is, is I've seen some of Fritz's new movies, and this nobody prompted me to do this, but my goodness, they're great. They're well, great. I can say, if somebody is watching the show and they like it because uh, I've got hair or not, <laughs> that's who bad. cares? That's yeah. right. If, 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 if that's the criteria. Yeah, that's really bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, but it's strange how many network anchor men, the 630, you know, when it was Brokaw, Jennings, and Rather, mm -hmm. their hair would, they would just get salt and pepper, and then all of a sudden it was brown again, mm -hmm. or it was dark colored. I just don't like when, I don't mind dyeing the hair, but I don't like mm -hmm. when they use that black finger or that polish. Yes. And well, they, yeah. Somebody, as I say, it depends on who makes it and, and how you style it. Right. Bing Crosby wore one, Frank Sinatra wore one, mm -hmm. Humphrey Bogart wore one. And, and you yeah. never, you, ne never, you knew never knew. It. Never knew. And uh, that's it's yeah. when you get when you get the kind where it looks like they parted your hair with an axe. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> or you, you know you're you're blonde on the yeah. side and you go dark black and you've got this two tone line like like the end of a two tone Buick or Chevy. It's <laughs> or you sneeze and it looks like a convertible up on the top of your head. Really? All of a sudden, there's like, like I say, the guy put in. You said I'm going to put it. Well, and then there's uh, Donald Trump with his hair. But that's not and a piece. Your, it's not a real piece. Hair. It's, it's not, real hair, it's but it real looks hair. like it. Don't he you makes think it look it? like it. Why does he do that? I don't know. What does he do? Put it in the waffle iron in the morning? He must do something. It, it's very This is kind of a trademark for the guy. Yeah, yeah I guess yeah. So. so. Do so you go think ahead. he's going to run for president? Uh, it would be fun if he did. Yes. Well, I mean, just, I mean this would give the stand-up comedians and the talk show hosts a ton. They're probably longing for him to run. Absolutely. I, uh, I don't think he can win, though. I mean, theorists, I would hope not. But you know what? Reagan was an actor when he came. Yes, he had been he governor. Yes, but he didn't brag about how much money he has and how much power he has. Plus, he'd been a governor. He'd been he'd a been governor. Been right. Involved in well, he he was the head of the film industry. Yes, absolutely. So you know, he had he had some good 
credentials. Should be interesting. I, I can't wait. You know, we're getting close. I just well, realized the, the other day. Republicans haven't come up with anybody yet. I saw There's Mitt Ro of... I saw Mitt Romney give a very good speech the other mm -hmm. day. Mitt Romney, very I think, is the most presidential of them all. Really, I do. I think it'll be Romney and uh, Obama. Uh, that's my I, I... that's my pick here, way out. Mm -hmm. But that's what I think. Charlie, you got any thoughts on that? No, I just kind of like in the background. I keep. You know, Watch we'll, looking them over. Yes. We'll, we'll get here in about six months, and okay. that'll be all you'll see on oh, uh, television yes. and radio. Going to go into the mailbag this week. I'm 13 years old. I have a wonderful stepdad who has taken care of me since I was born. He and I don't really ever talk, uh, except when I ask him to go somewhere or when I want something. That's the only time I ever hug him, too. What should I do so I can be closer to him, Cindy, in Delaware? They have a good relationship. Well, that's, yeah, that's wonderful that she has that kind of a relationship with a stepfather. You know, he may be the kind of person that doesn't know how to express himself. And um, he probably loves her dearly, but just doesn't show uh, physically, you know, uh, but I'm sure he thinks the world of her. And uh, she can just, little by little, get closer to him. You know, maybe just put a uh, you know, kiss, a small kiss on his cheek before she goes someplace. And then maybe the next time, you know, she could start hugging him. Charlie, it, it's yes. harder for men and little girls, is it not? I was going to say, I can just hear him now. Now what do you want after that kiss? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, just with the age of a gentleman who's 40 and it's not your biological daughter, and if somebody knows that, and I don't know, there are things going on in the world now today, Fritz, that there weren't. Well, it, it also might be that uh, the stepfather is sort of holding back so that okay. the, the so that the daughter won't think he's trying to replace her real father, and so maybe yeah. he's being just a little bit cautious so as not to alienate her uh, in that way of saying, "Well, you know, you're, you're not my real dad." And uh, but you know, it would so be nice if they had a conversation oh, about yeah, that, wouldn't it? it you would know, be. communication is so important with relationships. You know, if, communicate, talk. Um, I, and there's so many things that we hide and we keep inside that, you know, if we just get them out, and I think that's what she should try to do. She should try to get a um, good conversation going well, with her. Or stuff. perhaps like a mutual interest. Yeah, it's that mutual music interest. Music or sports or something that's that she that knows be. he's interested in that, uh, that would be a she good can idea. kind of bone up and say, eh. yeah. What does the quarterback do? Yes. We've we got to keep the lines of communication open. do want to let the audience know if they have a question for the mailbag, they can join me on Facebook under the name Scott Spears or email them to irmcommunication or at gmail.com. We tried this earlier on in the week. We're going to try it again. Uh, this is the end of the first week of the exchange, and we're going to celebrate. We have some people coming on to the set now. I called for them earlier on in the week. I don't know where they went. Just come on into the set. Come on in. Yes. Yeah, well, we're at three minutes. We don't need the truck. And Jessica has done a lot yes. of nice Jessica things. Jessica Choyna, us. floor director here this week. And by the way, this is great juice for all the people out there yeah. in uh, <laughs> television yeah. and radio land. Okay, Maybe. so maybe we can leave it sit for a while. We can leave it sit for a while. <laughs> now, has everybody had fun this week? That's the important question. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think our yeah. first, I think on Monday it was a little, little iffy. But, you know, we got things ironed out. And I think we're going to get better and better. And we hope that a lot of people will watch us. And we hope that... They give us some ideas. Maybe the people out there watching say, why don't you talk about fashion? Why don't you talk about, um, you know, cultural things? And we'll do that. We're going fishing. We're going fishing. We're going fishing. Right. Fritz, what do you think? How'd the week go for you? Oh, well, I couldn't believe that the half hours went by so quickly. It mm -hmm. seemed like, you know, we sat, sat down, said hello, and it's time to say goodbye. It's great, I think, to watch something on television or hear something on the radio that is not staged, but also is... Um, it's, com it's not news. It's not beating you in the head. It's not opinionated every moment. Well, I don't think you could tell I was reading a teleprompter. I don't think so. <laughs> Boy, the high-tech equipment that's in here, you wouldn't believe. <laughs> you, 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 you. Everything.
every word scripted. <laughs> it, 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 it has been a fun, fun week. I certainly Absolutely. have enjoyed it. To the Exchange, we'll be back on Monday. Here's looking at you. Here's everybody. Charlie and Good Scott. Good. Thank and you. Good grape juice. It is good grape juice. Mm -hmm. And we'll all be back next week. Yes. Charlie, you'll... You'll bring some more juice. I'll bring some more <laughs> juice. You'll, uh, you'll bring that dog that you like with the papers with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you'll bring that tea. That's why you got to watch every day. You that's got to right. start watching on Monday. You never right. know. Yeah, that's exactly right. You never know what's going to happen on the exchange on whatever <laughs> affiliate you're watching us on. Mm -hmm. Hope you're having a great time. Goodbye. <laughs>